Welcome to Focused on Forward. The purpose of this podcast is to focus on recovery from life situations, be it a disease, chronic or acute, perhaps the loss of someone so dear to you in death, or a change of life patterns that has affected you so profoundly that you have no choice but to find your new normal and become focused on moving forward. Each episode is designed to show the positivity that people bring to each and every one of their stories, the successes they've had, ways that they have become so definitively focused on moving forward. We look forward to sharing their stories, and we hope that they inspire you just as much as they have inspired us. Thanks for listening, and enjoy the show. Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to another Friday edition of Focused on Forward. Uh, we have a, a really nice chat in, in store for everyone tonight, and I, I'm super excited uh, to bring our guest in in, in just a moment, um, but uh, we'll we'll have an opportunity to meet her. Um, it, you probably have already met her if you've watched Funny Science Fiction, because our guest tonight is Anna Graves, and we'll have a formal introduction to Anna here in, in just a moment. Um, but we have uh, a quick thank you to our sponsor. So let's say hello to our sponsor, Vital Signs and Graphics out of Nuevo, Michigan. Since 1982, Vital Signs and Graphics has been helping professionals with all their image, logo, and design needs. Perhaps you're looking for signs and banners, truck and trailer lettering, business cards, brochures, or other image and marketing aids, Vital Signs and Graphics in-house design studio has you covered. From logos to apparel, start to finish, Vital Signs and Graphics has everything you need to look and feel professional. Call Rick at 231-652-3300. He'll get you noticed. All right, so that's Vital Signs and Graphics, where I got this super cool hat from. And if you're looking for signs, graphics, anything printed, designed, logo, creation, things along those lines, Give Vital Signs and Graphics a chance. Give Rick a call at 231-652-3300 and tell him that you saw us or saw him or heard about him on Focused on Forward. All right, guys. So now we're going to take a moment and say hello to our guest. That, of course, is the, the wonderful and amazing. I can't use enough adjectives about her because I think she's super cool. Uh, but that's Anna Graves. Hey. Welcome, Anna. Thanks, Tim. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I have so, and I was talking to one of my, my friends today, and we were, we were talking about the show tonight, and he said, well, what's your topic tonight? And I said, well, I'm talking with Anna Graves. He goes, didn't you just talk to her on Funny Side? I said, I did. I said, but she's so cool that I wanted to have her on Focused on Forward because of some of the things that she's had to deal with, with her children and, and so forth. So, you know, I have so enjoyed having you on, on Funny Science Fiction. We've got such great feedback from your episodes, from, from you coming on. You know, so I'm I'm so thrilled to have you here tonight to have a chance to talk with you because this is something, you know, a lot of the folks that I have come on the show, I don't always understand what they're going through or don't have a you know in a, a kinship to what they're going through. But uh, this is one where I feel like I don't know exactly what you've gone through because your child's autoimmune issues is different are different than my child's autoimmune yeah, issues. Sure. But but there is that little bit of I think of level of understanding of of, you know, it is an autoimmune issue. And so there's there's some things that uh, cause concern and, and so forth. So, yeah, no, definitely. We had our uh, pre interview chat the first time we spoke and it was great because um, I don't even remember how it came up. But the moment that you mentioned your child, I was completely empathetic to your yeah. situation because that's um you know any parent who has a child with a rheumatic disease or any chronic illness we can all empathize with each other so um so really thank you for having me on tonight i really i'm looking forward to having this discussion yeah absolutely so what i would like to do anna is is have you tell your story to the depths of course of which you're comfortable uh talking about your child's issue and what's going on with her um mm -hmm. you know but kind of take us through the steps you know when did you guys discover it how did it come about and you know kind of lead us up to up to now Sure. I'm going to try to, how do I shorten this story so that it doesn't get too long? The Cliff's um, Note version is always hard to find. <laughs> you know, my beautiful daughter is 11. And when she was five, 
uh, she started having a problem with her foot. We thought she had an injury and it took some time. It took, thankfully, not as long as a lot of parents, but it took, um, oh, seven weeks. And by that time, we were referred to a rheumatologist and getting a diagnosis of a rheumatic disease and told that she had juvenile arthritis. And it was just like, you know, uh, a light bulb went off on my head that uh, arthritis is not uh, something that afflicts the elderly. It is something that affects children as young as babies and didn't even know that here in the States, there's over 300,000 kids um, that have juvenile arthritis and oh, wow. many children abroad. So, um, you know, throughout my journey as a mom of a kid who has arthritis, I have learned so much from other parents and, um, my husband and I have become, you know, big advocates for the Arthritis Foundation, as well as taught my daughter to do that as well, because we thought through adv advocacy that would help her learn more about her disease and, sure. and be able to talk about it. And um, so anyway, she she was diagnosed officially when she was six years old and um, has arthritis in her ankles and knees. And uh, she has a specific type of arthritis called OJ, um, OJIA, which is oligo uh, juvenile idiopathic arthritis. Um, it also could affect her eyes. So she gets an annual checkup to make sure oh. she doesn't have arthritis in her eyes, which is called uveitis, and it can cause blindness. So, um, you know, knock on wood, she's she's been amazing through her journey. Her um, rheumatologist is wonderful. My husband and I have used each other as this support system mm -hmm. and really made informed decisions throughout her journey as far as medication and diets and, and things like that. So I, I'm, and, and a lot of parents, you know, they'll, they'll take that same journey and not get good results. Um, but I, where my daughter's at right now is amazing to me because we're just starting, like she takes weekly injections. She's on a biologic and she also takes a, a DMARD, which is a disease modifying drug. So she takes a pill every day. Um, and those things lower her immune system and also, um, keep the things inside of her body from talking to each other to cause the inflammation. Oh, okay. So the biologic interrupts her. It's a TNF inhibitor and it, it keeps those things from saying, oh, we need to cause inflammation. And then they just don't. So, um, but we just found out this week that we can scale back on her injections to twice a month instead of weekly. Oh, so, wow. That was our brand new information that we just got, and we're very excited. And oh, I'm, I'm bet she's thrilled. Oh, she's super thrilled. Like she, she also she understands that now her body's at this very comfortable, you know, position, having been on medication for a while, and she wants to see how her body reacts being off the medication. So now's the time to start that and see where okay. we go. Well, that's yeah. cool. Yeah. So she was, you said, uh, was it five or six when, when you. So she was six. She, she six, was five okay. when she started exhibiting um, uh, symptoms. She just had a swollen ankle. We thought she twisted her ankle on some ice and we took her to the pediatrician. They mm. did an x-ray, nothing. It, it continued to be sore. Another x-ray, nothing. Oh, it's a hairline fracture. We just can't see it. Um, so we had her in a walking cast for six weeks and then they finally did an MRI and it showed some swelling, but then they did a blood test. And that was what really told us that she had an autoimmune disorder. Um, some, you know, sometimes blood tests will give you the information you're looking for. Sometimes they won't. We were lucky enough to have gotten that positive ANA marker in her blood that um, said, oh, the orthopedist was like, you need to go to a rheumatologist. This is your journey now. Okay. Um, and, the, and the first doctor we went to, he was hilarious. He was he was mostly dealing with older patients. And he's like, yeah, she's got juvenile arthritis. So uh, I take some ibuprofen and I'll see you in six weeks. And we walked out of there and we we looked at each other and said, oh, oh, that's not going to work. We don't, <laughs> like, we don't like that approach. You just told me that my child has a chronic 
perhaps, you know, lifelong um, disease and then gave me ibuprofen. So I continued my search for an awesome pediatric rheumatologist and living in Los Angeles, I am very lucky because I have one that's about 30 minutes away from me. Oh, nice. Um, so some families with rheumatic diseases have to travel two, three hours uh, out of their, their town to go, you know, to their doctor's visits. And mm, whenever yeah. I hear that, like I, my heart goes out to you, you folks that are, are doing those journeys. Yeah. One of the things, you know, for, for us with my daughter's illness is we got, we got lucky right away. Uh, when, when my daughter was admitted to the hospital, the head of the, uh, neurological department was her doctor. So oh, we, wow. we, we, we struck gold on the, on the first try. Yeah. And, and then she came in a couple days after, uh, Kendall was admitted to the hospital and we were kind of going through all these things. And she said, I don't know how I did it, but I was able to get, I, I just ran into this other doctor and I was, I was hoping to try to be able to maybe convince him. Um, she says, but I told him about your daughter and what she was going through and he's going to come in in a few minutes and he's, you know, a renowned doctor in the area and he's, he's amazing. And so we got lucky on both hands. So he started treating her for the pain that was coming what, during that first week we were in the hospital. He said, I'm not so much worried about the pain that she's experiencing now because, and there was pain, but he was trying to, he was doing, of course, what he could to try and lessen that pain. But he's like, with Guillain Barre syndrome, he said, you know, there's pain coming down the road that is going to trump everything that's, that she's feeling right now. He said, so well, let's get ahead of it. And so he started medicating her then, kind of like building her up. And yeah, it's finding the right doctor is so very important for this journey. Yeah. You know, yeah. because. Um, you know, we've all had doctors, I think in, at one point in our life to, you know, autoimmune or not that are like, ah, it's nothing, <laughs> you know, the, the, uh, the here, you know, take two ibuprofen and call me in six weeks approach. Um, right. yeah. you know, the, that's not always the, the best approach. It's no, I mean, and my husband and I aren't the type of people that take that, that as a diagnosis anyway, like we're not, we're not, oh, what? No, 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 no. So, um, uh, the doctor that we have now, she's incredible. She's the type of doctor that when she's on vacation, she will still respond to our emails, you know, mm -hmm. and when we wrote her recently and asked, Hey, what do you think about weaning her off of this biologic? She was like, let's do it. Let's start, you know, yeah, let's cut back. Let's do it. Like she's on board and, and communicating with her is easy. So, yeah. um, y you know, I, I cannot, if you find your doctor frustrating, I wish you luck. I hope that you can find somebody else that you can you can really have those conversations with and, and disagree with and agree with and um, help. Yeah, them. absolutely. You know, this is one of the great things about uh, our our doctor. He's a he's a rehabilitative uh, specialist for these type of diseases and, and things. And so, you know, he's been this very much the same way. We can call him, email him, you know, text him even. Hey, this is what's going on. This is what we're seeing. We'd like to maybe alter this. You know, could we try, you know, maybe try this. This this medicine's not working. And he'll, you know, like, that one's not working. Okay, let's stop it immediately. Let's switch to this. Let's do that. He goes, you know. And so he's yeah. finding, you know, he's has no qualms about finding the mixture that works. Yeah. And listening yeah. to feedback. And, you know, he's like, he's like, I see her once you know, once a month, you guys see her every day. And so he's very, he's very open about taking feedback and, and suggestions and, and things like that. So it's very helpful uh, for us. Yeah. But I, how, oh, how about the assistants that work with your doctor in the office? Because I find the the younger, the students and the people mm -hmm. that surround my doctor, or our doctor, our kids doctor, um, they're really instrumental in that mm -hmm. what you just said right there like we're with them every day right so we can go in there and say well this week was like this and then this week was like this and then we were back up here and this is the ebb and flow of pain and this is the situation um since we've last seen you and they're so good at taking notes and oh yeah and one of the things that i like about our doctor's office is that it's not a high turnover and so, you know, some doctor's offices, I, you know, it feels like every time I go in there, even like for my personal doctor, mm -hmm. I think the people inside the doctor's office have changed hands like five or six times, you know, the reception's office and some of the nurses and things like that. But in his office, I, I'm pretty sure since we've gone there, it's been the same crew. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's awesome. 
because That's they, great. you know, we walk in and they're all like, Hey, Kendall, how's it going? You know, they all talk to her. They all know her. And you know, what, what books are you reading now? And you know, uh, yeah. so it's kind of cool. It's, they have a vested interest in your child's health, you know? And so, or at least if they don't, they're doing a really good job of making me feel like they do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> good. Well done. Exactly. Well done. So How long ago did your daughter get diagnosed? Uh, 2019. Um, okay. April 1st, 2019 was our first day in the hospital. Um, and then we didn't come out till July 4th. Wow. So, yeah, it was good times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I understand that, um, you know, and not knowing, too, and trying to figure it out and all the mm -hmm. question marks, that can sometimes be the hardest part of the journey. Um but, you know, being a parent and, and, and being in charge of making those medical decisions for your child, that's um, it, it's it, it's it was really taxing in the beginning. And now oh, yeah. um, it feels different. It feels easier. And, you know, I I hope that it continues that way. Honestly. Right. Right. So. But when, I mean, when, all, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, I was just going to ask when you guys you know, had the diagnosis, mm -hmm. what was your initial response to that, you know, emotionally, you know, how did, how did you react, you know, to that? Because I know that when, when we found out a, I was confused because I didn't, a, I, I didn't know what Kimberre was. I didn't know how it affected my daughter and I didn't know what the prognosis was going forward. So I made the mistake of, of hopping on uh, uh, the old Google machine and looking up a lot of things, I, oh boy, I read the wrong stuff. <laughs> um, uh, you know, so, you know, what was, what was the response for you guys? How did you handle it? Uh, I mean, I did a similar thing. You know, we, uh, we both got online, we did research. Um, the thing about specifically juvenile arthritis is no two patients are alike. No two treatments oh. are alike. Um, and what worked for one child might not work for another. And that's the troubleshooting of it that can be difficult. And also not knowing how severe it was going to get. Um, because I have met uh, through our journey of um, participating through camps and conferences. Mm -hmm. um, I've met parents who have children who have systemic arthritis and it affects their organs and it has caused blindness and oh my. It affects yeah. more than, um, you know, the joints that my daughter has. And I, it's, so you have to navigate through all that and, um, and also ignore some of the information that you're reading and not mm -hmm. jump ahead of yourself because it is serious um, stuff that you're, yeah. whenever you're researching any potential disease or illness, you know, if you're looking at the worst case scenario right away, then you can get sucked down that wormhole. So I tried to take that information for what it was worth and be very realistic about it and pay attention to her, to my daughter. And, and she struggled greatly she has you know whenever she's having flares i mean a ch try to slow down a kid try to slow down a six-year-old with right. knees and and ankles and you know uh, who is trying to play with her friends or go to a, a festival or a school event and crying you know at the end of the evening and mm -hmm. uh, because she's in so much pain with cramps and running a low grade temperature all the time and being tired all the time i mean these mm -hmm. are just these energy sucking things that her body was doing to her, which is why we tried different medications. Um, sure. So it, uh, what was your original question? Now I'm, now I'm, I've gone on the tangent. <laughs> no, I, I like the tangent. It's, that was good. I was asking what your, you know, how you emotionally responded to it. How did it affect you as a parent? Yeah. So I, because I have a fantastic partner too, like my husband, I can't say enough good things about him. He's, he's been, amazing and he as just a, a dad has I'd say equally been as supportive as I have been as a mom and of course I tend to hyper focus on things a little bit more and I'm like well what do you think oh it's a little more swollen today than it was yesterday which we do now you know and he tends to not worry so much about the the small 
darker things as much as I do. And he looks at the big picture. Um, but so that, that actually helps me. That helps me not um, have my little freak out moments where I'm perhaps <laughs> too wrapped up in it or too sad. But, but I mean, initially, yeah, sure. There were some days where I was like, wow, this is going to be really hard. And it, and it, and it sucks. It just sucks to be in this position. Mm -hmm. um, but for me, uh, after understanding more about the disease, um, like I said, getting involved with the Arthritis Foundation, that is what helped me not have more of those really terrible sucky days. Okay. Well, that's yeah. good. So I, your guy's situation sounds a lot like my wife and I, uh, my wife playing the role of you. Um, uh, <laughs> she, you know, she does, she handles things much the same way, you know, she'll, Oh, okay, she's spiking my daughter. Oh, she's she's really sore today. She's really tight. She's spiking a low fever. You know, I go in there, I'll check on her. And I'm like, well, she'll be fine. We'll just do this. We'll do, you know. Um, and then some days my wife and I change roles. Uh, some days I'm the over the overly worried one. And which is on because I'm between the two of us, I'm not the overthinker. My wife is very much the overthinker, the over planner. Um, you know, and I'm typically the one flying by the seat of my ever loving pants. Um, you know, and just going, hey, well, let's go see how this happens. And, um, but I think it takes both. It takes both temperaments to kind of navigate through some of this stuff because you're, you're learning on the fly. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, you, especially it sounds like even more so perhaps with, with your daughter's situation, because as you said, she's, so you, you know, I kind of look at the, you know, maybe a bad analogy, but you know, each child's kind of like a snowflake. No two are alike. They're all, you know, they've all got their own ways of doing this and, you know, and, and how yeah. it affects them. So. Yeah. Oh Yeah. Definitely. And she's, um, you know, headstrong and independent naturally. So, uh, but she's also easy <laughs> to, she's easy to talk to. She was easy to, you know, like, I, and, and things did graduate with her. Like she has, it started out with just her ankle. It was just her left ankle. Okay. And then it, it moved into her knee. And then eventually it was her other ankle and her other knee. Um, so then that was, you know, that was the thing is like, oh, I'm, I'm paying attention to what's happening when, and oh God, is it getting worse and, and things like that. So, I mean, but she, she just sort of deals with it on a day-to-day -day basis and, um, and, and watching her be able to talk to her friends about it has been amazing. And she did go through a little period where it felt like she didn't want people to know and she was kind of keeping it a secret. Mm -hmm. And then um, I'd say in like third grade, we were doing a, an arthritis walk and she got in front of her third grade class. That's right. And I took a video of it and she stood up there and she was like, so look, this is the purpose of the walk. And I have arthritis and this is how it affects me. And if you come and join us on the walk, it's a fundraiser and it really helps the foundation. And she's like, OK, so if you have any questions, I'll answer questions. So then her classmates who, you know, she'd been in school with since kindergarten started asking questions about arthritis and it was so awesome to hear her verbalize um the answers to these questions and 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 be able to talk about her her disease i uh i was like it was a good mommy moment that's awesome <laughs> that's cool that yeah. she was able to own it and just you know and, and and run with it i think that's that's so empowering uh to a child as well i think when they under they've come to a point where they're understanding what's going on with them yeah you know, because looking at our experience um, with my daughter, uh, not understanding at first, of course, what was happening and, and why it was happening and, and what was going on, um, you know, much later down the road. Now, I think that she has a, a much clearer, firmer grasp of, as to what's happening to her body, what's happening to her body, where she kind of goes from here. Um, and I also, that also goes back to her doctor. Her doctor, uh, you know, he talks directly to her. And he's, this is what's happening. And this is why it's happening. And this is why we're going to use this medicine. And that's why we're going to do this and that. Um, and so, you know, uh, he sees my daughter as a very uh, smart and intelligent young woman. And he says, you know what, I'm not going to treat her as anything but that. So let's talk to her and let's educate her. And I, right. that has been so very helpful, um, in, in my opinion, as to how this, you know, moves forward, at least for her. So. Of course, and, you know, uh, so that was most of our 2019 was either in the hospital or coming home and trying to all of us kind of rebound from being in the hospital and, and you know, 
adjust to new normals. But sure. in 2020, of course, there was the issue of, of COVID. Right. And not that it's gone or anything, but it's still here. But um, so how did that affect your parenting of a autoimmune child? Um, I mean, to give you some retrospective, like uh, during flu season, you know, I um, always make sure that my kids get their flu shot. And especially because my daughter has an autoimmune disease and mm -hmm. especially because she's on these medications that suppress her immune system, you know, I kind of, I'm, I'm the mom that's take your shoes off by the door, go wash your hands. Sometimes I take it so far as why don't we have after school clothes and we'll just burn these, you know, <laughs> like, oh, how many, how, how far do you want to go with it? And, and you don't, and the funny thing is, is when, when they were so little, I, I used to be like, man, germs, they're good for you. They build your immune system. Um, you know, and I watched them go through stomach flus and all kinds of things that you, you just are the worst. And I'm like, well, at least they're building those immune systems. They're going to be super healthy. Um, and it felt like for a while, my daughter had every cold and had the little, you know, the puffer because she had the cough oh, sure, and she sure. had this and that. And then all of a sudden... A cold is what kicked off her, her arthritis. Um, oh, okay. She had had a cold and was just finishing up um, an antibiotic. Or, no, no, she wasn't on an antibiotic. She was just taking like Advil at night and some, you know, just like vitamins and things like that. And that's when her swelling in her ankle started. And so they believe that sometimes it is a virus that kicks off uh, the immune response. Mm -hmm that to something that was already always there within them. Right. It just happened to come out at that time. Um, and since she has gotten her diagnosis, she really, I mean, knock on wood, she doesn't, she doesn't even get little colds or things like that now and then. Um, and I mentioned that to the doctor. I said, what, what is going on? Is her immune system so uh, overly active that she's just not getting these, Right. Colds and coughs because she used to get them twice a year mm -hmm. and now she's not. And it was kind of a muddled response. It was like, oh, well, maybe that could be or it could just be that she's older and she's done having that many colds. But I don't know. I My gut instinct tells me that it was her immune system. So she did have a couple of uh, like odd things that happened to her, high fevers and mm -hmm. rashes or some, some sort of thing that was an indicative like thing of, uh, of the, of a flare, something that was arthritis related, not virus or disease related. Okay. Um, so, but I still during flu season was super cautious. So when COVID happened, um, you know, we did what we all did who have kids who live in Los Angeles, we just sort of stayed at home. And then we started taking walks around the block. And then we started taking walks around the neighborhood. Then we started wearing a mask. And she was amazing. She we had taken the kids to Tokyo, maybe six months before COVID happened uh, in November of 2019. And they saw how everybody on the on the tubes, like on the train, and, and the um, public transportation, Half the people on there are wearing masks. Right. Because they're protecting you against uh, a sniffle they have, or they're helping protect themselves because it was cold and flu season. And they thought that was awesome. They were like, wow, that's really nice of everybody here in Tokyo to do that for each other. So by the end right. of the week, we had bought them their own package of masks because they wanted those. So when COVID happened and they eventually said, yes, it is a good idea to wear masks, we had those masks from Tokyo. Um, but then after that, she started wearing an N95 everywhere we went. And I say everywhere because she wasn't going anywhere, but like out, <laughs> we were out in, in the yard. If we were right. out in the neighborhood, um, I think it took about eight, I don't know, maybe, maybe six months for me to actually let my kids come with me to Target. <laughs> I was like, hey, do you guys want to do something crazy today? Do you want to wear a mask and go to Target? They were like, yes. <laughs> I was like, I don't, what if we get to the house? They were so excited. Um, you know, and you just have to kind of go with your instincts. I, I say, you know, we protected her as much as we could. And we, but I also... You know, as long as the other kids were wearing a mask, we would we would see 
we started having like yard dates with her best friends where we would mm -hmm. put picnic blankets down 10 feet apart and the girls would hang out in the yard. And then, oh, nice. yeah, that was the, that was probably two months after COVID started because I just, I was like, oh, psychologically, this is not good for them. And, you know, the she kids aren't always great on the phone. They're better in person. Yeah. Um, so I know FaceTiming and Zooming is is a struggle for some kids versus others. But um, right. but for my kids, those yard dates really, really helped. And and That's all the other. Yeah. And the, and and my parent, my friends who are parents of her friends, they're all very understanding of her specific um, situation and that she has an autoimmune disease. And they were like, yeah, you got to keep your mask on when you're around, you know you're around her so it's it was that's cool was, yeah how about you well uh we may have gone a touch overboard <laughs> um well because in the beginning we i mean also this just happened to you in two right we were this right we we were less than a year out from getting out of the hospital that was in july of 2019 then january of 2020 the, there was the rumblings that this was probably going to start becoming a thing and, you know, and, and then of course lockdown happened in April. So we were almost one year from the, the date of going into the hospital was the start of the COVID lockdowns in Michigan. Wow. And so, yeah, happy one year anniversary. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, we were still unsure what, you know, not only what COVID was, what it wasn't at that. Everybody was, nobody really knew, you know, how it was transmitted, how, you know, uh, what to be careful with, what not to be careful with. Um, you know, so when we would go get groceries, um, we have, we have a grocery store that we love to go to, but we stopped going to, we started going to Walmart because we could do the, the curbside pickup. Cause they were the only ones that had it at the time, you know, where you, yeah. you pull up, they throw your groceries in the cart and you know, the back of your car and you drive off. You don't have to get out. You don't have to touch anything. Yeah. Um, I still do that half the time and I've well, been vaccinated for a while, but yeah, absolutely. Pickup is awesome. <laughs> Uh, curbside rocks. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, but uh, so, yeah, so we started using that curbside pickup more because A, it was convenient and B, it kept us from having to go in around people. Um, and so, but still, when we got home, we had like this, this, uh, we used our, our uh, outside table out on the deck as kind of our processing table. Mm -hmm. All the grocery bags would come to the back deck. We'd set them all down. And, um, you know, at that time, it was hard to get sanitary wipes, but we had kind of um, bought out the, the stock of Clorox wipes months before because we were sanitizing everything, wiping everything down. And um, and so we were wiping every down every single piece of grocery that came in. And then we were when we ran out of sanitary wipes, we were making our own with right. uh, this this chemical, you know, this chemical concoction thing that my wife had found on Pinterest. And I'm like, smells like the same stuff. Let's use it. Uh <laughs> I think so, I was doing, I uh, can't remember, remember how many parts, but like I was mixing uh, rubbing alcohol with water yeah. and, and just a little drop of lavender to make yeah. it not smell so bad. Exactly. Like a doctor's office. Exactly. Yeah. yeah we, we were doing that with uh, uh, lavender and mint and something else. Yeah. We, were, yeah. we had, you know, the uh, essential oil things we were drop, you know, put a drop or two in and sure. kind of stir it into the mix. So it smelled a little better. But we did that for a good couple months, uh, probably, I think probably till June or July. Um, the great thing was, is that, so the university that my wife works at uh, has been phenomenal throughout this whole ordeal. So when we were in the hospital, uh, her boss mm -hmm. was like, you know what, take care of your family. Uh, they gave her, uh, we had, she, you know, they gave her leave, everything. She didn't have to worry about her job, nothing. Nice. Um, it was fantastic. Um, and then when all this started happening again, her boss said, okay, you can go work from home. And so she's, my wife has been working from home, uh, until now. She, I think in like a week, I think maybe wow. next, maybe next week it is, or maybe the week after either way in the next two weeks, she has to start going back to the office full time. And so there's a little bit of nervousness about that because, you know, she's been away from it for so long. Sure. You know, over the last couple of weeks, she started going in one day at a time. Uh, but yeah, so for the most part, we hadn't been doing much of anything with anyone 
uh, you know, close family members. You know, we had a pretty tight bubble because there was a lot of people. We, we were doing at home schooling for her um, because we live in an area, you know, not to get political, but there, we live in an area where, you know, not everybody believes in masks. Let's just put it that way, um, which is unfortunate. But yeah. so it we is. we had to be cautious as to who she was around and who was we let in the house and, you know, and all that kind yeah. of stuff. Um. But finally, we, we went on we, we went on a vacation down to Virginia a couple months ago, mm -hmm. probably right after the first year. I think it was in early, late January, early February. And we went down for a couple of weeks. And that was probably the best thing we could have done because everybody, yeah. you know, we basically been we had basically been sequestered in, in a in a building for two years, whether it was the hospital or our home. Yeah. Um, and no matter how much you love your house, after a while, oh. it starts feeling a little bit like a prison. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, That's and so, you know, what you were saying about your daughter, uh, you know, your daughter's wanting to go, you know, let's go to Target. Yeah, let's go. Uh, right. We had the same reaction, you know, like, when well, you want to go to Walmart or you want to go to, we have a store over in Michigan called Meyer, And like, hey, you want to go to Meyer? Yeah, let's go to Meyer. Let's do that. That's great. Let's get out of the house. <laughs> you know, and and so, you know, we have our masks on. We get back in the car. We, you know, everybody would use hand sanitizer and sure. and all those things. So, yeah, uh, you know. There was there were extra precautions taken, and, you know, and I, a lot of it, I think, you know, my wife and I talked about this a little while back. Uh, I think a lot of the precautions we took in the in the very beginning of the COVID journey was knee jerk because yeah. a lot of it was so very still fresh in our mind. And and we were so scared of what might possibly could happen, you know, yeah. um, you know, so we probably went overboard on a few things. Well, I, I say, and I say probably, but I can say I should probably replace probably with definitely. <laughs> but just in case my daughter's listening, we might have gone overboard. Yeah, right. <laughs> I can hear her now. Probably, Dad. Probably. Yeah, yeah she'll be standing uh, at the back door when I get home. You said probably. You meant definitely. I mean, look, we there's a lot that we didn't know. There's still a lot that, you know, we're always finding out. I... Uh, and, and because I have become more relaxed with, I mean, when I say relaxed, as in we're going out more, as in I'm letting my kid go to school. She goes to school three days, you know, three hours a day. Um, she's getting tested for COVID once every two weeks. Um, she's, you know, but we, we went on a family vacation. Like you said, we just had to get out of the house. We went mm -hmm. to Yosemite. We're lucky. We live in California. And so we, and thankfully her arthritis has been really good, especially the last six months. So we do a lot of family oh, hiking. We go hiking to places where there's not a lot of people, but we were still wearing a mask. Um, only recently did I actually, maybe two weeks ago after they, really said, hey, if you've been vaccinated and you're outdoors and you're with other vaccinated people, I went for one a hike with a girlfriend who was vaccinated and we had our masks off and we were like, this is so liberal. This is lovely. This is the thing we're looking forward to. Uh, and then I think we passed like 20 people during the hike and they were all smiling and we were like, yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. You know what's up. You know. <laughs> But that said, I mean, I still have a kid who has an autoimmune disease and she's not vaccinated. Right. So I still, uh, you know, absolutely 100 percent wear a mask, especially if I'm indoors somewhere. Yeah. Um, uh, but I am just why not? I'm mm -hmm. just I'm going to err on the side of caution because I don't right. want her to get this. I don't right. want to see how her body will react to it. Oh, um, absolutely. Yeah. You know, I, I, I'm and as far as getting her vaccinated, um, I know that her rheumatologist is going to say, yes, it is better to be vaccinated than to for her to get covid. So we will get her vaccinated. But that said, I have questions and would like to also find out, like, I'm, I'm curious because of the medications she's on. Will that affect the way her body receives the vaccination? Right. Uh, would it be better to get her off of both medications and then do the vaccination so that she can have a normal immune response or will she ever have a normal immune response because she is compromised? Right. I don't, like there's, 
Yeah. Those are conversations we had with our doctor as well. You know, sure. Uh, you know, what's the what's the likelihood of, of issue if if and when it gets approved for for young people, you know, uh, because it's it up wasn't until just recently. Now, my wife and I and my oldest son, uh, my son who lives at home with us still, we're all vaccinated. Mm-hmm. But when we go out, we go anywhere. We wear our masks for the same reason, because what if it got, you know, we were vaccinated. Sure. But what if I accidentally bring it home? Right. You know, and that's that's what I worry about. You know, the what ifs. Uh, and, and so we went and we talked with our doctor about it. Hey, this is these are our concerns, you know. Uh, and he said, he goes, well, I appreciate that you want to err on the side of caution, but I would rather see her get the vaccination than not. He says, and we'll deal with any medication changes or things that we need to do after the fact. He says, let's get her vaccinated and let's go from there. Yeah. Uh, and so we have, she's got her first shot. Yay. And that was, I tell you what. That was more anxiety driving for me than I think anything in, you know, probably about the good year and a half or so. Because, yeah, I, there was anxiety about whether or not, we, especially in the beginning of COVID, whether or not she would get this or, you know, and, you know, how it would affect her. And, you know, because there's autoimmune issues. And then, you know, because of what happened in the hospital, she's only on one and a half lungs right now. Uh, yeah. She has one of the, the, I think I believe it's her right lower half of the lobe of the lung is is basically dead. Um, And so, you know, then there's that. It's like, okay, so there's also that other complication that that she doesn't have the lung capacity to spare. Yeah. You know? And so there's all these things I worried about. And But uh, so she got the first shot and we came home that night. And I know that one of the possible side effects is a low-grade fever. Mm Mm-hmm. And she got a low grade fever. But in my head, oh my God, this is, I'm, you know, and I'm trying to keep it all in. But yeah, I don't know how good of a job I did uh, at that, at keeping that in and, and not, you know, exhibiting that out. But, uh, you know, every couple minutes I was like, how are you feeling? What's going on? How are you doing? What's, you know, um, <laughs> my wife's what like, a good dad. Yeah, my wife came by and she's like, she patted me on the shoulder. She's like, she's okay. Just let her go. Yeah, up. but, yeah, but, yeah, but. So, uh, yeah, for me, that was, that's been the biggest thing. So she's got her, I think she doesn't go for her. We just got her her first shot, like, just like two days ago, mm-hmm. two, three days ago. Um, and so that, that night she was sore. She was tired. The next day, uh, she was really tired. Today, she's doing much better. Um, mm-hmm. So... Yeah. So just hold on until that <laughs> and you're gonna be okay, Daddy. Yeah, yeah. So be okay. So yeah, we're we're uh, we're planning another vacation down into um down into back going back down to Virginia, hopefully end of June, early July. So nice. we have we have a question for you. Oh yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> If you had to guess, how amazing was your husband as a partner in this journey? Is that a leading question? And how awesome is your daughter? Kevin Graves, <laughs> thank you for the question. Who happens <laughs> to be my husband? Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, as a partner, meh, he was it's all right. 50-50, you know. And uh, my daughter's awesome. There you go. Yeah, my, my husband's amazing. I mean... <laughs> He's amazing. You're well amazing, Kevin. You know it. You know I think that. Darn, you can see my name. <laughs> Darn it, you can see my name. Yeah, your name kind of gave it away. Well played, Kevin Graves. Well played. Well played, sir. Well played. So let's talk a little. You, you mentioned earlier uh, about the work that you, the advocacy work that you guys have been doing with the Arthritis Foundation. So let's yeah. let's talk a little bit about that uh, because you gave me two lovely pictures uh, of you and your daughter and your family. So let's start with the first one of, of your entire family. And you can tell us a little bit about what's going on here. Hey, what's, that's you know, a, with a bear and an elf and a red bird. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, the jingle bell run is this really awesome. That's just what they've decided to call their, basically their winter um, run slash walk. Uh, okay. And 
it was it was incredible. So we did a, a 5K and it was a or 5K. You can do a 5K or you can do a one mile. Um, I think we did. Oh, Kevin, Kevin, where are you? Now I need you. I can't remember if we did a mile <laughs> and a half, two miles, what we did that day. Um, and my daughter was the youth honoree. That was in 2019, December 2019. So that's my fantastic husband back there. My beautiful daughter is number 67 there. And then uh, next to her is my little son. And he is uh, now eight. But oh, he cool. does not have an autoimmune disease. Um, and he is he is so supportive of his big sister. He oh, that's is cool. awesome. He, he he still has his first team Amelie shirt that we made him from the very first arthritis walk that we did in 2016. So okay. he, yeah, he's an incredible um, supporter of his big sister. Oh, that's cool. Oh, and our oh. team name that year was uh, the fellowship of the run. Well done. Thank you. I like that. That's a nice big, tie into uh, Lord of the Rings. Well done. Big Lord of the Ring, Rings fans over here. That's right. All right. And then we have this other one. So nicely dressed. Oh, thank you. We dressed up that evening. This was the fancy gala. So the Arthritis Foundation um, has these galas where tremendous things are donated and people come and spend money on baskets and things that they want to buy and, and the, all the money goes to the foundation. And um, my daughter was a JA warrior that, that evening and she was highlighted and they, they did a special piece on her and we got to tell her our story and specifically wanted to help raise money for uh, the painted turtle, the painted turtle camp. Painted turtle was uh, formed, I think in 1999 by Paul Newman and it's a, it's a camp that helps kids with chronic illnesses. Um, and they have weekends and weeks where campers with rheumatic diseases can come and get to know other kids with rheumatic diseases. So we have been to the family weekends there. And she has gone to JA camp for a week and, and loved it. So that, that evening, that was a really great uh, evening and a, a huge fundraiser for the for the foundation. They have they have the things like the gala as a fundraiser and um, walks. The, the the arthritis walk happens usually every summer, May June, in a town near you. You can you, you know they, they happen all over the country. And then the Jingle Bell Run, like I said, is their their winter fundraiser, and it's a really good way to get outside, do some exercise, and raise some money. Excellent. And, yeah. and so uh, everybody watching now, you'll be able to see this uh, in the links for the comment sections. And I'll put a link to this uh, same donate page. This is for the arthritis.org. You guys can go straight to the Arthritis Foundation and, and donate to them directly. Um, you know, you don't have to give a ton to places yeah. like this. Honestly, if you and everyone you know donated a dollar, yep, um, you'd be surprised how quickly that could all add up and how quickly and how far they could make that money go. Uh, with, with something like this. So um, if you and get a I chance, you, oh, go ahead, yeah. please. Well, I just have to tell you some of the amazing things the foundation has done for us. Um, the painted turtle camp was fully paid for. That was something that, you know, no, no family pays for you um, apply for the, for the opportunity to go and well, that's cool. Accept it to go. So it's free. Um, it's all through this, uh, that like this fundraising that, that, that this is possible. Um, so the camps are free. Um, what else? The conference, they have JA conferences where you can go um, and spend the weekend with, I mean, in, in non COVID circumstances, but uh, you can spend the weekend with other families, other parents. So they have, you know, it's really well organized. They have it so that the kids and the siblings of the kids who have arthritis can hang out and do activities together and then the parents go have meetings and and talk about medication and di our diagnoses and our diagnoses and our um um you know diet and and different things it's good it's a good support system um to to create that that uh, bond with people all over the country they come to these uh, conferences but well, that's um, cool yeah but they also do ja days where um, juvenile arthritis kids get to come and ride horses together or do crafts together or we've gone bowling together and all these events are free. They're all paid for through the, the, the foundation. 
Uh, what else? We, God, we were at one of the JA days and we did a raffle and my kids were picked um, with two other families to receive a free day at Disneyland. And that was amazing. Oh, nice. And you were joined by the fantastic Matt Eisman, who is the host on um, um, American Ninja Warrior. Oh, okay. <laughs> So Matt uh, also suffers from arthritis and uh, he was there with us and, and went to Disneyland with my kids. And, and, uh, and I actually knew him. We used to be at the same voiceover agency, and, but I didn't know he was going to be there when I, I walked up. And I was like, oh, guys, that's Matt Eisman from, you know. Yeah, how cool is that? It was pretty awesome. I bet. So a lot of really, really great things. And also when your kids... If your kids get diagnosed with arthritis and you don't really know where to start, they do this really cool thing where if you go to arthritis.org, they send you a JA power pack. So they send uh, your kid a special backpack with a book about arthritis and um, usually a teddy bear or an animal that has like uh, one of those rice packs inside of it that can be either heated up or cooled down and um, just some little things in there that just make them feel better. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, it was, it was kind of interesting. You're talking about the the turtle camp. Uh, and I, I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but one of the uh, kind of like the um, mascot of Guillain Barre is the turtle. Oh, uh, because, you know, because you people with Guillain Barre typically aren't going to do anything fast. So, the, okay. you know, it's, it's the slow and steady wins the race uh, thing. So it's kind of interesting. In fact, um, this is I'm going to show you a picture here real quick. If you notice, this is one of the, the logos that a lot of people use, but it's the Guillain Beret turtle. And so, you know, you know uh, we have a couple different turtles uh, around our house. I've I've made, you know, this is what I do. I make shirts. Uh, so I've made a, a Guillain Beret shirt for my daughter. And I've, um, you know, we've had some, some cool things like that and bought her a nice uh, little blue and green turtle necklace. Um, nice. You know, uh, in fact, when, when we, or her first day back in, in public school after we got out of the hospital uh, last year for school, <laughs> I made her a shirt because uh, you know how kids talk, you know, oh, she was in the hospital for that many months. She's dead now. Um, <laughs> and so, her, so for her first day back in school, I made her a shirt that said, nope, not dead yet. And all the, nah. O's, and all the Earl, uh, all the O's rather were turtles. So <laughs> <laughs> um, I love it. Yeah. She's got her father's sense of humor, which I don't, think is always going to work out well for her favor but you know we'll see how oh, it goes yeah. sure it will it'll work out <laughs> good it's a good thing to have so um, we're, we're running uh, we're running close on time here so i just want to i want to ask you if you have any parting advice for parents uh who are going through autoimmune issues with their own children clearly not every autoimmune issue is the same and every child and every person is going to react differently to them but mm -hmm. if you have any con any advice that kind of help give you some level of constancy, what would it be? I definitely would say do as much as you can with a hopeful heart. And when I say that, I mean to those parents who tend to overreact, don't. Um, use the community around you. Hopefully you have a great doctor. And if you don't have a great doctor, then you can still find that community of parents who also have kids with this similar or same disease that can really help you through this. Um, that has been instrumental to me. Because if we had to do this alone and we were completely blind about a lot of these things before big decisions had to be made, it would have been much harder. Yeah, absolutely. So, so don't be afraid to see if there's a support group. Like, I don't know if there's a support group for your daughter's condition. I bet there is. And if there's there not, is. maybe your family is the one to start it, you know? We've, we've actually, uh, we found a, a Facebook group that we started doing some work with. And, 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 uh, and also, uh, I interviewed one of the, the chapter directors of it for uh, the Guillain Beret Foundation. Mm -hmm. And so, and I got to get reached back out to Maryland, but uh, we need to. I told her that maybe in the summer of 20, 2021 that maybe we'd be able to hopefully do something and and because they have a really cool, um, I think they call it rock and roll, rollathon, 
uh, because a lot of people who are affected by Guillain-Barre can't walk for long distances or things like along those lines. So many of them use walkers, you know, or the walkers with the uh, the little uh, the little seats on them and, and things, you know, and or they they use the wheelchairs or things along those lines. So because there's a lot of uh, muscle uh, and joint issues, uh, you know, my, like recently my daughter's had to start getting uh, cortisone shots in her in her uh, knees and her hips, uh, yeah. which are lovely. Um, yeah, we did that once. We we ch- opted to put her under to do the shot in the knee. Did you put your daughter under? No, but probably the next time we're going to. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, that, that was rough. That's a hard one. And yeah. I mean, because I feel like she was eight, seven, eight when we did that. Okay. But, um, but it was interesting because even as big a deal that was going to the hospital and getting under anesthesia and getting the shot, um, three months after the steroids started to wear off, she was having a lot of pain again. Mm-hmm. And she said, Can I get another one of those shots in the knee? And I mean, how many kids would, would say, Hey, let's do that again. Right. You must've really needed it. Yeah, and absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that's about the time that we started talking about adding the Enbrel, which that's the biologic that she does. So. Okay. All right. Yeah, we just we just did. I think this is our second time uh, with the shots. This one didn't go so well because we we they gave us some Emla cream to kind of numb things up and we didn't put yeah. it on in the right spot. So that didn't uh-huh. help anything. So yeah. that was that was bad parent time. Mm-hmm. Um, so we felt that didn't help uh, any of the feelings. Let's put it that way. Uh, but yeah, so. <laughs> well, and I. As, as the parent, well, my husband and I switch off, but usually she picks me um, to give her her injection. So, you know, that I've started, I give her her weekly injection and um, that's, you know, that's a hard thing. At least it's not in the knee or in the, in the hip. I don't have to do that to her, but. Um, oh, that's good. But it's never hard on shot days. Yeah, I get that. I get that for sure. All right. Well, um and I just want to say thank you for for coming on and and talking about uh, your family and, and what you're doing with your family and and I, I wish your daughter well. Uh, she's lucky to have a mom like you who's willing to to go to the lengths that you guys go to and and uh, even that Mr. Kevin Graves uh, and all that he's done and and so uh, thank yeah. you thank you Mr. Graves for not only jumping in and, and saying hello but also for for everything you're doing uh, as well. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I and thanks to my my friends who have always joined us for the arthritis walks and thank you to our school principal. I mean, our daughter's principal has been nothing but compassionate and and involved in this process, which is great too. So that would be my parting thought. Would be you know perhaps if your child is having trouble at school, don't be afraid to. Uh, hey, thanks, Kevin Graves. <laughs> Don't be afraid to reach out to your child's school, to their teacher, to their principal, because, you know, you never never know where help uh, will come. Yeah. Open communication. It can't hurt. Yeah. So. All right. So very good. Now, guys, if if you're uh, thinking that the voice sounds familiar, probably because you you know Anna from a lot of different things. Anna is a very accomplished voice actor uh, who's been in Star Wars Clone Wars. She's been in Voltron. She's been in more video games than you can shake a stick at. She's been uh, Princess Leia, so many other different things. So I strongly encourage you guys to check out her work and what she's doing. Um, And if you want to see more about Anna uh, and what she's done with Funny Science Fiction, the other podcast I host, Anna was a guest uh, for both a pre-recorded episode and a live show. And she was tremendously awesome on both of those. So Not to give it away, but I won a mug. I That's right. Questions. <laughs> she did the thing. She got the treat. She got the prize. <laughs> All right. So, hey, Anna, again, thank you so much. I uh, really, really appreciate you coming on here and doing this tonight. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tim. All right, guys, that's going to conclude us for Focused on Forward. Well, that concludes another episode of Focused on Forward. To be a guest of Focused on Forward, you can reach us through Twitter at Podcast FOF through our Facebook page named Focused on Forward, or through email, focusedonforward at gmail.com. We look forward to hearing each and every one of your stories that has yet to be told. So until then, be safe, be kind, and be loving to one another as you stay focused on forward.